are going to move into our uh, final presenter. Not, not to say that you're ready for this thing to be over, but you're probably getting hungry, right? Um, so we're going to have Pat McGreevy come up from the Cal-Am team. And uh, there's a reason that we're ending with Pat McGreevy, and it's really because it gives us real great global oversight of some fantastic work that you probably don't realize has been going on. So I'm going to let him uh, take over while I bring up uh, the presentation. Welcome, Pat. Thank you. So let me start with, uh, uh, can you hear me in the back? Raise your hand. Yes, good. Okay, good. So um, our group got started right after the Butte fire. So the Butte fire started in the McCauley Canyon in the north part of our, part of our county and it burned 72 acre, uh, 72,000 uh, acres and uh, I think 800 houses, something like that, a couple deaths. Um, about, it was February 2016, right after the Butte fire, that we went to the West Point uh, Cal Fire Station, and we met with uh, um, the uh, commander, the chief there, Mike uh, Leichenheim. And Mike, uh, and we had Beeline with us, and we asked Mike, what can we do to prevent another Butte fire <clears throat> from occurring in Calaveras County? He put his finger on a map uh, right where he wanted to. Did you mind holding that just a little bit closer? Closer. 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 There yes. you go. Closer. All right. So he put his finger on a map and right where um, uh, he, he would like to have a, a, a fuel break. And we said, well, we'll try to go out and get some money to put this fuel break in. And, uh, but we're not only interested in your fuel break. We're interested in landscape um, uh, uh, fuels reduction projects, you know, hundreds of acres or thousands of acres of that kind of thing. So anyway, we applied for a grant, and uh, first one we didn't get, and second one I think we did get, and we were, and, and we started our program. So um, at the current, uh, and so we will operate in. Um, Calaveras County and we operate in uh, Amador County and where um, our group consists of uh, uh, foresters and myself a, GI, a GIS guy uh, mapping and, uh, and a couple of other uh, volunteers who uh, run projects. On the Highway 4 corridor uh, this is uh, our team Jan Bray registered professional forester myself and Lori Plouts and Haley Dillashaw are write grants and manage projects. If you want to talk to us or um, and or to Kaylee and Lori, they're over in next right over here in this area here. <clears throat> next slide, please. So we we believe that we can stop catastrophic wildfire from destroying our communities. And we, and we believe that we can do this through the like three-legged stool, which is in front of you. And this is what we're talking about today. So the first leg is an effective wildfire response, and that's CAL FIRE, and it's your Ebbets Pass Fire Department, it's your Murphy's Fire Department, and these guys are good and they know their job. So we're, we're, we're good shape up there. The second part of the, the second leg is is uh, is uh, fire adapted communities home hardening defensive space ingress egress that's you guys that's your responsibility and so that leaves the the third part the resilient landscapes which is the wooey around our communities so it's that that line between the wildlands and the urban and the urban areas. And that area is can, it usually uh, managed by the United States Forest Service, BLM, large ranches, water districts. The Calam team, which is us, is uh, we go in and we partner with these with these agencies in order to uh, construct a fuel breaks. Next slide, please. So, what actually do we do? Well. The first thing we do is we try to 
locate uh, strategic locations where landscape scale shaded field breaks will protect our community assets. When we got, when we're uh, at the next step is we, we uh, make a set of maps. Uh, I spend my, we make maps and then we change maps and we change maps until we get it right. And, and then in these, and then in these maps, we, we map out where we cannot work. Those are archeological sites and places where spotted owls might be and uh, issues like that. And we also map out where we can work. And when we, then the next step is, well, what are we actually gonna do in the areas where we can work? And that, the, that, that's called prescriptions. So that's uh, the prescriptions would involve, are we gonna thin the trees and do commercial thinning? Are we going to remove the, uh, the, the biomass? Are we gonna prune the trees? Are we gonna masticate? Are we gonna burn? There's a whole bunch of tools that, that are in our toolbox. So we, uh, we, we write our prescriptions simultaneously. We're writing environmental documentation that protects the natural and cultural resources in the area. Then we finally get on to estimating the cost of the project and we go out for bids for contractors. Um, and we award contractors based on value. Finally, we, uh, when the project gets going, we conduct weekly inspections for quality control and we do all of the above is performed at no cost to the landowner. Next slide. We can't do this alone, obviously, so here are our collaborators. Cal Fire, Calaveras uh, County Water uh, Resource Conservation District, CCWD, Calaveras Foothills Fire Safe Council, Calaveras County Office of Emergency Services, Firewise Communities, pg and &E, Private Landowners, Ranchers, Sierra Pacific Industries, Stanislaus National Forest, Utica Water and Power. And these are all, really all the people, all the groups in your community that are working in the, in the WUI to protect um, you, uh, our, our community sense like. So what's the threat? Um, we're fortunate that CAL FIRE maintains a database of all fires over 10 acres that have occurred since the year 1900 until today. So here are the four biggest fires that have occurred in Calaveras County. And there's two take home lessons for this, for our group here today. That here's the highway four corridor, or this black and white line going up there, that's highway four. And notice that uh, in here, we have the uh, old gulch fire, which we, um, which you just talked about a moment ago. And the Old Gulch Fire um, started over here in Cal um, Old Gulch Road, Calaveritas, I guess, somewhere in there. And it burned this way up towards Sheep Ranch, went down to Highway 4. It actually crossed Highway 4 into Forest Meadows and, and burned some acreage there, small acreage. And, and firebrands actually went into the a deep Stanislaus Canyon and caused and started a couple fires there which were put out by air air resources so uh and then the next uh, uh um, point that w that i want to make is this is the old gulch fire and that was in uh uh sorry that's the um, darby. Darby. the darby fire in 2001 and the darby fire started way deep in the canyon and um and burnt uh up the canyon and it burned right into uh, forest meadows, and you can see this is the ridge, the rim of the of the canyon right here, and it burnt right up to uh, McKay's, this uh, area which is a little bit that way. And if it, and if it weren't stopped right here, it would have gone. The next step would have been uh, Big Trees uh, Park. So the point here is that. Our communities are vulnerable, just as Mary Bottle said a moment ago. We're vulnerable. 
<clears throat> the next point I'd like to make is that we can't just focus on our communities. So what happens up on Highway 26 corridor, we got to pay attention there too. Because the Butte fire started over here in uh, Amador County, burned a crime through the McCallany Canyon and burnt all, all, all the way down to Freco City Road and Sheep Ranch in, in that area. So we, when we think about fire prevention and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, treatment of uh, our forest, we, we need to have a comprehensive program that covers our whole county and actually into our neighboring counties as well. Next slide, please. Oh, wow. Colors are completely different. So, so, so these are uh, the number of fires uh, that we've had uh, starting in uh, 1950 and ending in, in uh, 2020. And, in, and um, they're in five-year cohorts. So the bottom line of this slide is, is that the background level of wildland fires is around 1,000 acres uh, per year in, in Calaveras County. And, it, and then we have these disasters here, which we start with the railroad flat fire, um, the uh, uh, Old Gold fire, Darby fire, and the big one, uh, the Butte fire. So, there's thousands, I guess, of ignitions that occur in Calaveras County every, every year. And, and you, uh, property owners, put these ignitions out. And when the ones you don't get out, the, our fire services get out. And, but it's only occasionally that we fail, that the system fails. And in, in most instances, it's because the, um, our fire response, the first responders can't get to that growing fire fast enough. So remember, all fires start real small and they grow large. So if they start in our deep canyons, like the McCallany Canyon over in uh, off the Highway 26 corridor or Camp 9 on the North Fork Stanislaus, those, the, our, our first responders cannot get there. There's no roads. And, or, or the roads are overgrown with vegetation. And, uh, or, and uh, anyway, the fire is growing, growing up uh, from the canyon. And our, our suppression forces are waiting on the rim. Sometimes they get overwhelmed and have to retreat. As in the Butte fire, sometimes we can put it out at the rim. Next slide. <laughs> um, Cal Fire just showed us a number of pictures like this. So the, the, the picture is asking the question, what's our goal? So our goal is, is this picture is, is shown in this picture, taken in 1926 over in Amador County. So note that there's hardly, there's grass on the, on the ground, hardly any ground fuel. There's hardly any ladder fuel to take a ground fire up into the canopy. The trees are all big, and, the pine, and, and pine trees have thick bark, which is fire resistant. And um, these pine trees self prune, so there's no branches touching the ground. And they're well spaced so that the fire can't jump from this canopy here over to that canopy there. So this is, this is our goal. Note that you can see a whole football field. The line of sight is 300 feet, maybe more. So this is the situation in uh, 1920s, let's say. So now let's look at a few of the projects that we're working on in your community. Next slide. This is um, the Murphy's to Forest Meadows uh, project. So this starts behind the Diggins in, uh, in Murphy's 
and goes up the ridge line all the way to Darby Knob. This is what it looks like. Um, this here is the Forest Meadows Waybridge uh, project, and, and this slide here is right in the middle of the Forest Meadow Waybridge community, right next to 600 houses. Wow. If you want to learn more about these, this project here is being, uh, well, this is managed by uh, Calaveras County RCD. Uh, uh, Gordon Long is not here today. This is Lori Plutz's project, and she's sitting over here next to the camera somewhere. Next slide. <laughs> she is, yeah. <laughs> next slide, please. The, uh, this is Hunter Reservoir. Hunter Reservoir, this is Kaylee Dillashaw's project, who is over, over here. This project will be the most difficult project that we will do. We're fi just finishing the environmental studies right now. We're about to go out for, uh, for bids for contractors. So um, we took this picture from the uh, Utica Canal, which is right here, looking down into, I think it's uh, Mill Creek, and you can look at all the fire fuel. Look at, look at how crowded and choked up the area is in there. Um, so, it, so our contractors are going to be challenged to pull all this stuff out and grind it up. So why? So it's not only a difficult project to implement, but if you go back over this way, the Highway 4 would be over here, and right in here is Hunter Reservoir. Next to Hunter Reservoir are CCWD and Utica of Water and Power uh, authority uh, uh, facilities. What they do, CCWD takes and pumps the water from uh, this area here in Hunter Reservoir and the Utica Canal, and they pump it all the way up to Camp Conn. And they and and that's where you, you all get your 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 domestic water. You also get all your your fire hydrant water. Their CCWD maintains 1,100 fire hydrants between Murphy's and, and Camp Conn. So if this place burns down, where this whole fire uh, hydrant system is compromised. Going the other way, Utica lets its water go down to Murphy's and all the way to uh, Angel's Camp. <coughs> And there's another, I don't know, 600 or 1,000 fire hydrants going down that way. So this area here at uh, in Avery at Hunter Reservoir is absolutely critical to our, our future. Nick. On the right here is another uh, Davy Killershaw um, project at Darby Apple. That's behind the, the, the Apple store down there on, uh, in, in Avery. Next slide, please. Oh yeah. Um, so this is uh, Lori Plotz's project, and uh, this is Jan Bray, our forester. And uh, remember the 1926 slide where you could see a football field or two. Here, the line of sight is probably five feet. There's 26 acres of this, um, and. Um, and taking this picture from the, uh, the what do they call it, uh, Dowd's Landing Road. So if this catches on fire, we have an ingress egress problem. So you, you have Ebbets Pass fire trying to get in, and you have the residents of Dowd's trying to get out, and you have this burning. It's yeah. not going to happen, it's going to be a disaster. Over on the right, we have another road issue, and this road is up of, uh, in our McKay's project, which I'm the project manager on this one, and uh, this road is 5N63 near McKay's Point Road, and uh, you can see if this, all, if this was on fire, the captain's not going to allow his fire engine to go down that road. So roads are really important, as you pointed out. Next, <coughs> next slide. 
So here's, I, I brought the picture back so you could, to remind you what, look what, what our goal is. This picture here is um, a before picture. This is taken um, right above our McKay's project inside uh, Big Trees Park. And it's, again, it's on a fire road and um, we've, well, I've already talked about the fire road. So, so anyway, the issue is, the question is, can we take this forest, which surrounds our communities and convert it into this? That's our goal. Next slide. The answer is yes. Yeah. Or we can get it pretty close. So here's a, a we an initial entry on all those pictures that I just showed you. We're going to go in with masticators. And these are pictures of masticators. So you talked about your logs. You can't get rid of your logs. If, if it were our grant, we would grind the logs. And um, so we would use a, a, a machine like this, a masticator with a masticator head. And over here, uh, this masticator head is right here on the end of the big articulating arm that's, uh, that's on a, um, um, what do you call this machine? The excavator. excavator. Okay. So in this case, we can see the before is in the background. That's what he's masticating. And the after is in the foreground. So you can see the uh, masticating shreds that are sitting on the ground there. Next slide, please. So this is a close up of the masticating head. And uh, this, this thing spins about 2,500 RPMs. And, and this uh, contractor has, see these? These are called knives. As compare this one with out here. Um, these are called grinders, and so the grinders grind up the manzanita and the brush pretty well, and the knives uh, grind up uh, biomass, so they'll take a sapling that's, that's 25 feet tall, they'll put their head on top of it, and 30 seconds later or less, it's ground all the way to the ground. <laughs> this is the shreds that are left by the masticator. Here is a uh, six inch, maybe, uh, mechanical pencil. And right next to it is a uh, stump of a sapling that, uh, that they ground flush, fl flush with the ground. These shreds around here are, say, six inches, 12 inches. And some of them go up to three feet if they slip through the masticator. But this is our goal. And our goal is to lay a to, use, to put these shreds on the ground so that they serve as mulch, just like the mulch you buy from Home Depot. And the mulch acts to maintain moisture in the surface, and, and it uh, also serves to um, uh, control erosion, and, and also it, it serves to retard the regeneration of the brush that we just masticated. Next slide. Oh yeah, so there are trade-offs. Masticators do um, occasionally hit granite rocks and cause sparks, and they cause fires. So uh, all of our projects, uh, the contractor is uh, uh, required to have fire, uh, fire trailer and fire uh, suppression equipment right on site where the work is being done. And as you probably all know, we all close down operations during fire season, which usually are in June, July, we're, we're pretty much finished. And uh, we don't start up again to, until no, November and when they're uh, after the rains come. Um, next slide. So here's some examples of some completed projects in your area. So this is the Arnold Wastewater Treatment Plant. So you all know where the taco truck is. It's across the street. So when you drive down, <coughs> drive down Highway 4, when you get to the taco truck, look out your right window, and you're going to see this. So this is what we started with. And, and the prescription in this um, project 
was to keep the larger trees, diameter, the diameter at breast height, I think was 30, 32 inches. And so we went in and marked all the trees in yellow and a yellow stripe. Here's these two trees or these two trees here. So we took out all this uh, vegetation in here and we thinned the trees. Um, the, the, the larger trees went to standard mill to, to make lumber. And uh, the biomass is too expensive for us to haul down to a processing uh, um, area to make a, a place to make electricity or, or to use a small uh, uh, dimensional lumber. So we masticated. The, it, the haul, haul costs are too high. So we masticated all, all of this stuff here, and then we had this layer of mulch that's on the bottom. Next slide. <coughs> yeah, this slide is the Davies Ranch, which is right out, which is in Avery. And uh, you drive by part of the Davies Ranch when you go down Highway 4, but it goes all the way over to the rim of the Stanislaus uh, Canyon. And so this is right on the, on the rim of the Stanislaus uh, Canyon. The canyon, the river would be over here. So, and this, this is a before picture. Notice we have Manzanita. And then we have all these little sapling trees that are mixed in with the Manzanita. The, this whole business here has been growing since 2001. I think this picture, I don't know, maybe 2020. So this is 20 years. 20 years of growth after it burned after the, um, the Darby uh, fire. This is an after picture. So what we asked the contractors to do was to go in with their masticators and pick off all this manzanita and get rid of it. So notice over here, there's no manzanita. But we also asked the um, uh, contractor to select the healthiest sapling that they could that they could find, and to um, and to save those saplings, and to make the saplings 25 to 35 feet apart, and then to and then to prune up all the trees. Uh, so this is what the after looks like. We're right on the edge of the uh, of the Stanislaus Canyon, and this this area will uh, I'm sure Cal Fire. And uh, our, our firefighters are going to use this uh, as an anchor point uh, to prevent uh, the fire, to stop the fire from coming out of the canyon. Next slide. Ooh. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. How did they do that? That's a really big screen. <laughs> so you've got to do some mind work here. <laughs> The point of this slide is is that uh, this this area here is Lily Gap outside of West Point, and it was um, masticated by in in the year twenty uh, by Robert Smith from from Mountain Ranch, and um, and this is so this picture here is taken I think twenty twenty three. So this is 13 years after it was masticated. So noted, it looks just like when Robert Smith left. And um, so he thinned out the trees and we have and left that layer of mulch on the ground. So we got 13 years maintenance free out of, out of the mastication project that was done here. Um, so Oh yeah, and the ad, and the additional really interesting point was we had the, the beetle epidemic was 2012 to 2015 or around there, and you remember all the dead trees. Oh yeah, like boo, like springs. Um, so in this in this particular area where Smith uh, masticated and thinned out the trees, there was no beetle activity. All the forest around the tree, uh, around this project, got hit hard by beetles. <laughs> so this is what we call a healthy um, 
fire uh, resistant and drought driven beetle resistant forest. This, this, this is a healthy forest. Next. So let's come back to Highway 4 now. We've looked at all our methodology and this is what how we're applying the methodology along the Highway 4 corridor. So if you, uh, so this is what we call the Highway 4 wildfire defense system. And the metrics is that, oh, just look at the colors. So if it's a red color, the fuel break is, is been installed and it's uh, def uh, defensible. Look at the green. The green are the projects that are that we're doing right now, and uh, and the purple are are areas that we're thinking about that we should be doing some work in. So just when you focus, don't focus on Tuolumne County. This is uh, the North Fork Stanislaus River uh, Canyon, and uh, oh yeah, each one of these dots is a structure. So Microsoft has, has plotted every structure in the United States. And so um, each one of these dots represents a structure like your home. And um, so what, um, what, when you look at the total area that we're going to treat at, at build out, it's 10,000 acres. And so one acre is a football field. So it's 10,000 football fields. So, uh, and it runs from Murphy's all the way up to, to Dorrington to Camp Connell. It surrounds 8,500 structures. Estimated completion 2026. We'll probably miss that date, but that's our goal. And, um, uh, and so the next, so now all of these prod, all of these individual fill breaks are all going to be changed color into red, meaning they're done, but they're not done. <clears throat> what it really means is they're entering the maintenance phase, and, and so um, that and that's the biggest problem that we have now. This. You know, this looks really good, and you say, great job, but it's not going to look like this 10 years from now. So what's the, uh, the next slide is going to be maintenance, I think. Oh, this is private pro or property. Yeah, I made this slide a couple of weeks ago, and I was really surprised. So here's the owners of the, of the fuel break, the fuel breaks that we've been putting in, and here's their acreage way over here. And to my surprise, the private property owners, out of the 10,000 acres that we've been working on, that the private property, of, uh, that half of it is private property. And the other co a quarter of it is forest service, and another quarter of it is, is SPI. Private property is really hard to work on because you've got to go get a right of entries from every one of those property owners to get onto their property. Now, I was really amazed when you said you got, what, yeah. 69 out of 70 or something like that? That's really good. Pretty convincing. Yeah. We need you. <laughs> we need you. <laughs> the other guy is Pete Pedalford in the ball yeah. cap over here. <laughs> he really shames him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, so we get, I don't know, we send out our letters. Maybe, if we're lucky, 70% of the landowners would re respond, so we got to send out a second letter and a third letter, and eventually we get it up to 95% compliance. And those other 5% hate the government, and they hate us, and so <laughs> we will never get them. Next slide. Maintenance. So we know, we're pretty sure that the maintenance interval is five to ten years to re, to re, retreat our our fill breaks. So that brush is going to every ten years or so we got to go back and do something about that brush. 
Currently, there is no maintenance plan for any of the work that we're doing. So that means there's 10,000 acres on the Highway 4 corridor, and there's also going to be 10,000 acres on the Highway 26 corridor. So in Calaveras County, we're going to have, at build out, we're going to have 20,000 acres that needs maintenance. So, um, and, and it needs maintenance in perpetuity. <clears throat> So if we don't do the maintenance, if we just kick the can down the road and let our let our uh, uh, the next generation deal with it. So we either deal with it now or they're going to have to deal with it later. So a maintenance program. This is all me talking. You know, I'm just thinking out loud. So um, the maintenance program is going to for uh, 10,000 acres, just just the uh, Highway 4 corridor is going to cost about. Five million dollars for ten years. So break that out. We really could. We could treat. It's ten thousand acres. We could treat one thousand acres per per year on a rolling basis, and that would be five hundred thousand dollars a year that we would have to generate. That's doable, not by funding from the county, which is which is uh, broke all the time. Um, that we. But we should probably, we could probably get, generate that money uh, through grants from the state or uh, federal uh, agencies. And such a maintenance program is going to need some kind of an environmental study that lasts 10 years. We cannot be redoing vi environmental studies every year. And we can't be writing grants every year like we do now. On the Highway 4 corridor, I think we're, we're now up to nine grants. So we need some kind of funding that's going to go out for 10 years. And, uh, and, and we need environmental documents that are going to go out for 10 years as well. So I think we need a fire marshal with expertise in forest management in mapping, writing grants, contracting, and more. So I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> so now I'm promoting you to Forest Marshal, and that's just an additional duty. <laughs> anyway, um, we have uh, our supervisor is getting on this, and I uh, that. So Hubbard is your supervisor. I hope he recruits Garamendi, who is my supervisor, and we can actually get this going. Hold one. Okay. So I want to end with the three-legged stool again. So we have our fire departments who do great work. We have the, our communities, which are you guys, and you're going to go home and get on it this afternoon. Uh. And then we have the resilient landscapes, the wooey around us and the Forest Service and ranchers, water districts. Water districts are really stepping up. Um, the Utica Water District and CCW are, are, are really pitching in to help. So the bottom line is, if one leg, of the, uh, one leg fails, the whole, stool, the whole stool collapses. And so please do your part. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. At the very end of our our um, presentation, we're going to get to our raffle, but we got time probably to handle maybe a question or two if that's all right with you. All right, Tom, you had a question. So Pat, I see that you, you have the map and you've got what you've got going, what's been done, what's in process, and you're going to get all that done. Is there still areas where you don't have any answers for? That, that is not in your plan, that still is going to be a vulnerability? If everything gets done. Well, I, I think you could look at our work as being, how about their minimum? You know, I mean, we, in reality, we should do the whole damn forum, the whole Sierra Nevada, yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that's impossible. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, right now, uh, if you look at your uh, map, We've gone all the way up to 
the canyon rim on the Stanislaus, and right now we're bumping up against against the park, Heather's Park. And so Heather uh, gave her five-year plan, but I think I'm, uh, that I, how much acreage are you covering in, in the park? Fifty percent, Richard. Can you speak to that? 2,800 acres. 2,800 acres is what the park. So round that up to 3,000 acres, and uh, how many acres in the park? 6,500 or something like that. 6,500. 6,500. Acres. So that means that after the five-year plan, that we still have. You do the math. Three. Is 3,000. I do the math in my head. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of acres that still need to be done. So I think the park is probably our. Um, Area of most interest from a threat viewpoint. Wait a minute, one at a time. I'd like to comment on that. Sure. So, you know, this is only a five year plan. It's not that we're going to stop there. We're going to continue our efforts, but this is the funding that we have available for the next five years. And actually, it's not going to cover it all. So, we're going to continue to apply for grants. But I just don't want the community to think that we're stopping there. We're going to continue our efforts and we're going to keep going back to manage our forest. Okay, we're going to take one last question right here and then uh, we're going to go to the raffle. I was involved in wildfire fuel reduction a while back. And the previous slide here. Yeah taking down the cost of like 500000 a year for 20 acres. I'm yeah. just wondering, two things. One thing is, yes. is there a way to go ahead and compare the average annual cost of doing the wildfire maintenance versus uh, waiting until there's actually a wildfire or, or waiting or doing wildfire fuel reduction projects if there's another way of doing that. And the one other question that I'm thinking of is, is when I was involved with this several years ago, it was very hard to get maintenance grants. It was possible to get welfare mastication grants and that, but it was very hard. Is that situation improved? No, you're, you're right in the past, five years ago or so. It was, I don't think they gave out mastication grants. I'm not sure. However, that doesn't matter anymore. So our McKay's project, which is starting right now, is pushing a thousand acres, and and we were and we were granted from the Sierra Nevada Conservancy two point one million dollars, and the Forest Service is throwing in another six hundred thousand or something like that. So maintenance grants are in now. Thank you, Dan.